another video I am currently in the village located outside of Mainz actually and I have Irina right here hello so Irina and I have met through couch surfing and I thought why not I'll be staying with her and her family to showcase it to you what does a life in a village look like is that right yeah right. <laughs> so where do you stay I usually stay in Krupica it's a village uh, like 20 kilometers from me the weather has suddenly turned into a very clear and sunny and it gets warmer and I think this is a perfect opportunity to showcase it to you the surrounding neighborhood of Krupica village This is your neighbor. Previous. Galina, she's very hard working. You yes. See? It's very, always very, so everything in order in here. Yeah, I saw it this morning. She's already working. Yeah, she wow. Works from the morning till the night. Wow. Having this kind of experience, especially during autumn, makes it even more special. Coming from a tropical country, we don't have the appreciation towards four different seasons in the sense that because we never experience it. But I personally think that every season tells different stories and now with the leaves mostly being on the ground makes everything becomes and looks warmer because of this orange and uh, you know beautiful so most of the people who live in this village are either factory workers or workers who leave, who actually are working in Mings and would commute every day to the city and the land itself that is located that you know nearby the house is usually only being managed for families look at this beautiful house in the sense that they have the garden all the plants and everything and you know, it's interesting to just see the neighborhood around this particular houses next to one another with this interesting gate, I would say. So this sign uh, is something like announcement and uh, it says that they sell uh, goat milk, uh, goat cottage cheese and butter. So they put numbers over yeah, here. Yeah, they put numbers of uh, like phone numbers so people can uh, call them and buy from them. the sort of market area of Krupica village and behind me is one of the biggest shops um, surrounding of that particular shop there are many other smaller shops and even some uh, probably local who comes here on several other days within the week to sell what they have does he live here is he from here originally uh, he's just visiting his friend here. Ah, I see. So how far does My he live? Yeah, they his friends live here, yeah. Ah, okay. First, you have this big shop. And over here, you have several other shops that are also available. Example of a shop in, you know, a small village or just many shops in Belarus. Lots of alcohol, selections of beer and um, fruits. Fresh produce, a little bit of, of um, potato, onion. A shop like this in a small village like that is essential, you know, especially if you don't want to go so all the way to the main city center or the main market to pick up some stuff, including knickknacks of your household. So Babushka here yeah, has babushka babushka lots babushka. of tomatoes, pepper, carrot, and this, this is... is uh, 
I don't know what. Show, skinny. Skinny, skinny ah. but a little Ostrich. bit bigger. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I see. This is hot pepper. She's from neighboring village, Anopol. I it's see. In this direction. So she brought things from her own garden. Oh, that's sweet. This is honey, I think. Isn't, is that what you mean? This is homemade honey, yeah. But these are government, this is government shop. shop yes. And so and they just brought some new I see. So they have the hairdressers. Oh. 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 Ah, it's bread, fresh Ah, I see. <laughs> when you're traveling with a camera, there is always this, wherever you go, there's always this sense of apprehensiveness, you know, in a sense that thinking, oh, what is this person doing with a camera? Uh, because generally when people travel, they stay in the city and then without any of this equipment. But at the same time, this is a great equipment and tool for me to tell this story from different places I travel to so that you can also learn together with me. Behind me is a monument that usually exists in many different villages showcasing the names of those who passed away during the Second World War II. But specifically, the monument itself indicates the year of 1941 till 1945 because specifically during those years were the time where the Soviet Union were involved. All of these names are gathered from different villages to actually be remembered by people who pass uh, by uh, this particular monument. <laughs> So they are collecting all of the fallen leaves on the ground and then bring them over to the nearest farm to make use out of it, to make it as a fertilizer. I'm trying to do their work a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to help Belarusian economic, yeah? <laughs> help Belarusian yeah, okay. economic, that's true. Yeah. Oh. Wow, good job! Yeah? Good job. Good job. <laughs> 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 uh, this is our center of culture. And so we have different uh, studios there, like dancing studio, uh, painting studio. I know that uh, older people, they go also to fitness classes here. And... Um, uh, here is also a concert hall. I will show you later if it's open. You used to so, go there, yeah? I used to go there like for disco. Wow, uh, like once, this Once cool. in a week they made uh, something like disco parties here. Really? On Saturdays and when I was teenagers, yes. Wow, that I don't know fun. if it still exists. Sanya, привет! Let's go inside. They want to guide us there. Oh, привет! Hello! 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, show your English knowledge and they told me, oh, we don't know anything. <laughs> I am in the concert hall. Can you believe that even in a village there is considerably not the most traditional village there is that I am visiting, but still this is a very magnificent idea to even know that a concert hall here exists. What Ira just told me, the building itself, this particular building, was built during the Soviet time. And probably in all post-Soviet countries, a theater like this, a concert hall like this, uh, pretty much is a great heritage that still exists in different cities or sort of main villages, like Krupitsa itself. Suddenly, all of these teenagers want to take photo of me and with me. And knowing that I have a YouTube channel, they suddenly like, oh, I want to show everything. Uh, teenagers life, hey? They're asking if I do have Instagram and TikTok, and I said, no, that would be the last thing I would have. Imagine standing here dancing around the disco music. 
It would be so fun because I personally don't have this experience myself. Having this magnificent building with the chandelier and all of this, like, art. It's incredible. I mean, for me, it is... I'm a bit speechless, to be quite honest with you. So I'm currently in the only school in Kurpitsa village because usually this particular school that is considerably a Belarusian school with the curriculum and everything. People around the neighborhood and the village uh, have their kids and children, of course, come to this particular school. So that is the classes. If you can see, and over here is probably the auditorium. Over here we do have probably football field for the kids to play on and many different fields. Doprojin! That's Russia. Oh, that's lovely. And you see there are still kids around playing. So the school here is pretty much free for anyone. I mean, for all the students and kids who are enrolled in this particular school and all over school in Belarus. Uh, they only need to pay about 20 rubles per year for books. Basically, the taxpayers are the one who sort of pay for the school and the tax money goes towards the education. However, the downside of it all is that, of course, there is not enough money goes towards this education system or renovation. So when the people wants the building to be renewed and renovated, uh, they're asking for contributions from the parents themselves. The problem with school like this, according to IRA, is that there are not many teachers available because of the low salary that is provided by the government. Henceforth, usually people don't go or choose teachers as their main vocation or job. So Ira is currently taking me to the older part of Kurpitsa because some of the houses and buildings are still pretty much considered to be traditional. This house reminds me of the one that we visited uh, at the village of Ira's brother, but this is considerably to be one of the older you know, buildings with the color blue and green. So what Ira just told me, all of these different benches located outside of different houses used to be used by different babushkas or grandmas basically to come together, have a chat, probably drink tea, no? No, no. They usually ate this sunflower seeds or ah. pumpkin seed that I told you before. Unfortunately, the tradition has sort of disappeared now, yeah? Yeah, maybe only in remote villages yeah, they still have it, yeah. So, Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> 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 She's from, from Indonesia. Uh, she told us, you need to marry a local guy. The lovely babushka that we saw earlier is actually living here by herself. Quite sad, and she, I think, got emotional when I was asking her about, you know, the house and tried to showcase it to you uh, because probably for her it's nothing interesting, but it's very interesting for me personally. Babushka here lives alone, and she's a bit sad because she doesn't have relatives. All of them have passed away, and I feel a bit sad. It must be difficult to live by herself. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. Она говорит, что это трудно жить одной. 
Mm. Babushka just got back from a hospital, so she hasn't been in the house for the whole month. Babushka lives here with lots of cats. No. Oh. So this is where she probably arrests. Вот сними и покажи, как в Беларуси люди живут. Я вылью эту воду, да, можно? Does she use the water to drink? Yes. We can bring water for her. Не, она хочет попробовать сама. А, сама взять. Можно, я вам, я вам перелью ее. This reminds me of my dad's village. <laughs> First we take this and drop it here. Yeah. And then right. we do this не бойся, не бойся. until it reaches the bottom. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then pick it up. Так, I забыла как зовут. Подожди минутку. Подожди, подожди. Wait a bit. Вот это. Yeah, you need to just to adjust this stink. This wire or what? Yeah, you got water. Not much, but not bad. Thank you. Oh, oh, she is sweet. Oh, don't be sad. <laughs> don't be sad. Yeah. That's good. Cool. Cool. so much for watching today's episode i hope you learned something from this particular video as much as i did let me know what you think down in the comment section below would you actually travel to different countries or just immerse yourself in different culture than your own would you actually be interested in learning more about this different type of cultures from around the world i just want to know what you think and don't forget to like comment subscribe to this channel see you again next time bye